Hello, this is Steven Vickers. Today I'm going to be going through using ArcMap to export a geo-referenced raster map image. So at the end of this we'll have a JPEG image file with an accompanying world file that locates that image on a map. Uh, this can be loaded into our Trimble GPS devices or our uh, Leica Viva or Leica Captivate units um, or back into other GIS platforms. So first thing we have to do is load Arc map. So Arc map is available to students. Uh, just look on the library GIS website. You'll see different data sets as well as access to a student edition. So when we launch, we get a default screen like this for getting started. Uh, you can go to standard templates, North America, ANSI A. Landscape is generally a good one to use. And now we just got a blank map. So we can load all different sorts of data in here, but the first most important thing to do is to set the uh, coordinate system. So to set the coordinate system, you can go to uh, Properties. I've got a few favorites here. You can search or you can go through. But the one we're interested in is the North America Datum, NAD, uh, 1983 and we're looking for the Canadian Spatial Reference System, CSRS, and we're looking for the Modified Traverse Mercator Zone 9, which is where we are here in, uh, in Ottawa. So I'm going to select that one, uh, otherwise you could search for it here or load it from the internet. Okay, now that we've set our coordinate system, we can start loading in different data sets. Um, convenient way to do that is just to go to file add data and then add data from ArcGIS online so if I'm looking for say Ottawa data I can search that and see all sorts of different data sets maybe I want to uh, see of Ottawa 2017 imagery and we can add it. So it's saying that this data we're adding is in the uh, the World Geographic System 1984 so it's automatically transforming it into our NAD83 uh, coordinate system. So here is my aerial imagery. I can load all sorts of other data sets or I can just work with this. Uh, what I'm going to do, I can see that I've got this page here, and then I've got this bounding window. So I want to zoom in the bounding window as opposed to what I'm doing right now, which is just zooming on this page. So there's actually two different uh, zoom tools here, one for the map layout and one for the uh, box on the map. So I'm going to zoom to the campus. Instead of clicking, I could also go up here and change my map scale. Okay, now that I have the aerial imagery loaded in the correct coordinate system and laid out the way I want, I can go about exporting it as a raster map image uh, with an accompanying world file that geo-references the, uh, the image. So to do that, uh, I can't be in the layout view because if I export this, it will just export uh, essentially this page with the map on it, I have to be in the map view itself. So down here there's two images, a layout view and a data view. So we want to go straight to the data view. Now we can export this data view as a map by going File Export. We have multiple options and we're going to use JPEG. That's the file format we'll need for the Trimble GPS devices, and for the Leica Captivate device. Um, another common format is TIFF. Lots of the aerial imagery um, that you can get online will be in TIFF format. So to load that into Captivate or Trimble, you would first have to either bring it into ArcMap so that you can convert that TIFF to JPEG, or you can convert the TIFF to JPEG using um, a free software called GIMP. Uh, we'll get into that in another video. 
So the things you want to make sure, you want to make sure this is saving as a JPEG, that's writing a world file, which will contain the, the, the geo reference information for the pixels, and you want to make sure the format isn't progressive. Aside from that, you can mess around with the settings a bit. Um, so depending on how much area you are showing and what sort of resolution you're using, you could have a very large file or a very small file. Trial and error is the best way to try this. Uh, and you'll be aiming for an image that is no more than, I'd say, a few megabytes or tens of megabytes. So let's try 200 dpi. Now I can see it's exported two files, my JPEG, which is 1.34 megabytes, and this JGW, which is my world file that uh, is associated with my JPEG. If I open it just with the notepad, you'll see this is just some transformation uh, projection information about where this image falls on, uh, on the map using the coordinate system that we specified, the NAD83 uh, CSRS MTM Zone 9. And here is that JPEG. So I can see uh, that the resolution is good enough for me. So this I would be happy with putting on a USB and loading into the different um, different hardwares. So I can copy this, insert a USB. Uh, now I have to use the file structure format for Leica if I want to load it into the Leica Captivate. Uh, so under the root directory have a data file and then a map underscore images file and then you can paste it right in there. Now when I plug this USB into my Leica Captivate uh, CS35 tablet I will be able to locate this map imagery and load it um, as a background. Okay and that is how you can go from ArcMap to Leica Captivate. Okay now I've made this file previously it's not very well organized, but it is combining multiple data sets from, uh, from the internet, from the, uh, the library. But here first, I've just got a base map that's world imagery. So what are some of these other files? Well, these are from the library, and these are historical images. They're TIFF files, and they're very large, so they will slow the computer down. But here you can see data, I think it's from the, uh, the 50s or uh, 40s. So you can see I accidentally zoomed in and out too much and seemed to have cancelled it. So just pan around a bit, it should load. So I've got that aerial imagery, I've got uh, some drawings of the bathymetry of the Rideau Canal. There. Sometimes I find uh, the screen doesn't load, in that case I just pan around uh, by clicking the middle mouse button, then it seems to show up. I don't know why, uh, why sometimes it doesn't. And if I open that JPEG I just explored, you can see I have the two images overlaid on top of each other, just like I do here in ArcMap. 